I'm Elisa Parker. We're broadcasting live here from the Wild and Scenic Film Festival. 17 years we've been doing this extraordinary film fest. Amazing. It is amazing. I have another extraordinary person here with me, Jason Sussberg. So a lot of times when we are creating films um, through our own passion, the question comes up of how do we, how can we create these and still be financially sustainable? Jason's doing a workshop here at Wild and Scenic and talking about that, sharing some tips and tools. He's also wears many hats. You were, were you the director for Bill Nye, the science guy? Yeah, director, producer, um, and I did the audio uh, as well. Is science, do you have a background in science at all? I don't. Um, in fact, I, uh, I guess I was scientifically illiterate. I didn't take any classes in high school. I, I hated science, but I was drawn to it. Um, in the era of, I guess it was the Bush administration, and I, I was really drawn to empiricism, skepticism, how we knew the world around us. And so I, I had a late in life um, and sort of uh, appreciation and love of science that um, yeah, came to me not well after ad adulthood. Right. You know, I, I forgot to mention to you off camera when I lived in Washington, um, we had two local TV shows that were happening there. There was, it was Seattle Bandstand, mm -hmm which I was one of the dancers on. And then the other group was Bill Nye, the science guy. So, almost live? Was it almost? Yeah, okay, almost yeah. live. So, yeah. I mean, I was mm -hmm. a teenager uh -huh. during it's those a great days. Show. It is. Mm -hmm. And so Jason also, were you here for the Nevada City Film Fest? Yeah, I was on, I was here uh, with Bill and the other director, okay. David. Mm -hmm. That's our other festival here is the Nevada City Film Fest. Mm -hmm. So, and you were doing a workshop uh, around funding and financing. So what yeah. are, what are some of the tips and tools you can share, Jason? Well, every film wants to be funded differently. If you look at a film as this uh, entity that you're bringing into the world that you're sharing with other people, it has its own agency. Um, and every film has a different path to funding. Uh, in the case of Bill Nye, we knew we had a, an excited millennial audience who wanted to see Bill Nye back on screen. So we knew we could go to a crowdfunding platform like a Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and engage directly with Bill's fans. Uh, Bill was involved in the um, the fundraising with us. He was We had access to him. And so um, we used his social media, and that one wanted to really be funded via crowdfunding. The very first movie, a very first feature film um, that I made was called The Immortalist, and that was a totally different journey. That was more of a, a lie, cheat, and steal your way to making a movie, sleeping on couches, eating ramen noodles, and just doing it with a low to no budget. Um, and I'm working on a new project now, and it's just every different film has its way it wants to come into the world. And so you kind of have to you know, have a, a dialogue with the movie, like, how are you going to come into the world? <laughs> and, you have to be flexible. Yeah. Hopefully like ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's funny you mentioned sustainability because I, you know, like to make environmentally sustainable movies, but also something that is financially sustainable because the goal is to not just make films, but to actually be able to live um, and to make them come out in the black and not be leveraged with debt. And so um, it's important, I think, to to fundraise not just for the, the film itself, but so that the crew who's putting all this love and attention into the movie, they're remunerated financially. Right. No one's going to get wealthy on it, and nobody goes into documentary films to make money, but it's nice to know that you can actually make a living uh, making emotional content that's based on you know evidence-based research and love of the natural world that's pretty uh, spectacular right and another thing and we've seen this trend here especially at wild and scenic are the campaigns mm -hmm. that have been created as a result of the film right so it, the film ends up having this longevity and also a way to support and be really integrated and involved with the purpose of the film. If yeah. it's a film around, let's say, um, some kind of environmental action or something. So yeah. that's kind of shifted too, I would think. It has. And how we look at funding and yeah. supporting the, you know, the livelihood and longevity of filmmaking. I mean, yeah, the, the panel that we were on was basically about not just, it's soup to nuts funding, but the other part that filmmakers never consider is the impact campaign. What is the legacy and the role of this movie going to play in the real world? Is it to pass a policy? Is it to engage people to vote on something? Is it to make people more uh, literate and aware of what's happening? Um, you know, the, the, we don't make these films in isolation. We do them for a particular purpose. In the case of Bill Nye, we had a big impact campaign because we partnered with 
um, PBS, and they were able to get us into classrooms and to talk about climate science and talk about space science. And so that's something I got into storytelling. I didn't think that funding or impact funding was going to be a big part of it, but it is, right. especially when you're out of gas and you've made a movie. The last thing in your world you want to do is raise more money to get it out in the world. But that's really the way it is. It's the key part. Mm -hmm. What are you working on right now? I'm doing a film on a uh, legendary environmentalist uh, who goes back uh, all the way back to the 1960s uh, by the name of Stuart Brand, who made the Whole Earth Catalog and was a foundational figure in modern environmentalism. And now he is um, getting into this uh, realm of biotech conservation, which is uh, very controversial and has uh, been called de-extinction, bringing animals back from extinction. And so mm. it's very controversial. Uh, we like we think it's a great story to tell. He's an amazing human being who thinks long term, and uh, we've been filming for about a year, and uh, it'll be out next year. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What do you love most about Wild and Scenic? Well, I mean, it's set in the greatest uh, small town in North America, um, Nevada City, but also it just brings out an incredible amount of. Uh, of, of, of filmmakers and then the audience that just absolutely adores uh, nature films, science films. It's pretty awesome to see um, a small town like this be able to draw from its own community um, just to lovers of cinema. So uh, I think the engagement between the filmmaker and the audience is really special. It's a lot of magic that happens here at Wild and Scenic. Mm -hmm. Jason Sussberg, thanks so much for taking a moment to join us here in the Media Lounge. It's great to have you here. I'm sure you're going to be back. Of course. For some future projects. Mm -hmm. Where can folks go to get connected with you and find out more about your work? Uh, you can go to Structure Films. Um, that's on, uh, that we're Structure Films on Twitter and on Facebook and also on Instagram. Um, but if you're really curious, you check out our new project, which is uh, Stuart Brand Doc, and you can find that on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Elisa Parker. We're broadcasting live from the Wild and Scenic Film Festival, 17 years of this incredible, extraordinary film fest. We're going to be sharing other stories, stories like Jason's here coming up. Thanks so much for being part of this. Thanks a lot.